I had a plan for this week's presentation, and then I realized that this will be the first video of 2022. Happy New Year. So for this video, do you mind if we just look at all my 2021 snakes? Welcome to The Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. Many of you have been with me since the start of this channel a year ago, so I'd like to just do a bit of a recap of the year, which includes all my snakes that hatched either here or with another breeder in 2021. That's nine snakes, 14 different morphs, two different species, and three localities. And one city that's now in danger because of your irresponsible pet choices, Burbank and Toluca Lake. Two cities. Maybe Hollywood. Can they go over hills? That's three cities. Do I even need to introduce Kent anymore? Yes, because Kent's Corner is so famous now that I need no introduction. So no. Are you doing a Kent's Corner this week? Uh-uh. It's raining outside and mom couldn't find my umbrella this morning. We'll do it later. We're not just looking at pretty snakes today. For new keepers and people considering a snake, this should give you an idea of sizes, personalities, behaviors, and some good comparisons of snakes that are under a year old. This is Echo, by the way. She accounts for the entire other species that I was talking about and all three localities. Echo is a super dwarf reticulated python. She hatched last April. Now, aside from genetic morph, we also track localities in these retics. So she is a wild type, possibly het for anery, but I that didn't matter to me. I got her for her small genetics, which has to do more with the localities. So she's 50% Karampa, which is the tiniest locality of Super Dwarf, smallest island that, that these come from, and uh, they produce the smallest snakes. She's 50% Karampa, 25% uh, Kalatoa, which is the second smallest locality, and 12.5% Solaire, which is the locality with the coolest name. I picked out Echo because I wanted a super dwarf free tick that would hopefully stay small. She's expected to be uh, seven to nine feet, which actually sounds huge when you, when you say it, but keep in mind this body type. She's gonna be very thin seven to nine feet, which is really probably three to 4,000 grams tops, which is the size of an adult ball python. She'll be a lot longer than an adult ball python, but also a lot thinner. So about the same, same size all balled up. But be careful if you're considering getting one of these because they really vary in size. You could get a legitimate super dwarf reticulated python. You know, let's say the breeder didn't lie to you about the genetics and it actually has at least 50% or more super dwarf blood, then you can call it a super dwarf, but it could still get to 13 feet long which is a pretty massive snake. They, you know, the longer they get, the thicker they get. So 13 feet is a much bigger snake than a ball python, obviously. I plan to breed Echo, but we're at least four years away from that. So right now she is just a super curious, highly intelligent snake who has her own set piece on the Green Room Python soundstage. Uh, I think soundstage and set piece are a bit of a stretch. We're in your living room, not Paramount Studios, you friggin' goofball. Oh, can will you just hold her for a minute? No, God, get away, ew. Well, I think we'll just put her on her set piece then. I think what we'll do is set the ball pythons up in the playpen and try to get a good comparison view. This took way longer than I expected to figure out, but I got the playpen and it's up so we could talk and I got a b-roll camera. Oh, turn the camera on, jeez. Okay, let's compare two very different looking pides. This is Bear, August 2021, baby. He's a pied 100% het clown. He's such a cute little guy. And he's a great example of what I consider a medium white pied. And this is Captain Farrell. He hatched in July. I think early July. He's a leopard inchy pied, 100% het hypo, 50% het ultramel. And he's a great example of a very low white pied. He's really only got the white on his tail, but his belly's really cool. Like this kind of along his, not not even the belly itself, but the, the side. You can, you can see all this pied on, on his side, um, which the camera won't focus on. But hopefully it does when I put him in the, Playpen. Inchi is what does that to Pied. It brings a lot of the pattern back in. Um, plans for them next year are Bear will go in with Lydia Dietz, who is my clown head Pied. We're looking for some visual clown Pieds. And then the good captain there will uh, go in with Molly Malone, my Ultramel head Pied, 66% head hypo. And we're looking to prove out her possible hypo and his possible Ultramel. 
So it could be a triple recessive project if the Ultramel and Hypo gods are smiling upon us. These two are very well-mannered little boys. And even though Captain Farrell was biting everything, mostly his tub when he first came in, I would be surprised if I ever saw him strike again. He's such a uh, personable little snake and comes out onto my hand all the time. This is the Sundance Kid. He hatched in late August. He's a cinnamon het sunset and he'll go to Evie, my vanilla het sunset next year. He's also really well socialized and loves to come out and explore around. Uh, you know, in pictures, cinnamon and black pastel never really did much for me, but when I saw it in person, I was like, man, this is cool. Cause this is really visually, this is just a, a cinnamon. Uh, he's het for, for sunset, which is a really awesome gene, but visually he only shows cinnamon and in person, he looks awesome. Really like him. Okay, where are we at? I'd like to show my snake that I got in 2021. That's right, I gave Kent a starter snake to get him over his phobia of snakes. Hi, welcome to Ken's Corner, your favorite show that we're, we're, we're doing it right here again this week. This is Eric the Murderer. He is Eric the Murderer, and he was born at Ikea. And Eric, Tell everyone what you like to do. Well, Kent, I like to squeeze people until they are dead and then I eat them because that's what the snakes do. I am a snake and that is what we do. Maybe if your brother Bob doesn't want to get squeezed and eaten, he maybe shouldn't have so many snakes. This is worse than last week's Kent's Corner. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner, your best source for news. You still haven't landed on a slogan. I'm still test driving a few catchphrases. So in case you're interested, since they're all crawling out, you know, they're all pretty close to the same size. Captain Farrell's a little bit bigger, but I just set up my scale. Let's look at bear. Bear is 221. And I'm gonna guess that the Sundance Kid is the same. 210, pretty close. 210 and 221. And I'm gonna guess Captain Farrell here at 240. Three, 243. I'm not taking B-roll of the scale, so you just have to trust me. 227. All right. So he's not, he's not a ton bigger. He just seems bigger. Look at my handful of snakes here. I'm gonna put them back in their homes, and then we're gonna take a look at the clutch that I hatched out. I have all but one of them uh, right now that we can look at and compare sizes and things like that on. There is a big size difference in them. But let me first say that 2021 was Green Room Python's first full year. I did a video a couple weeks ago that talked about how the YouTube side went. But additionally, in 2021, I started my first year of breeding. I was hoping for three clutches and I got one. I was ecstatic about that clutch though. Uh, and we're about to look at most of them. I learned all about Super Dwarf Reticulated Pythons last year. I got my first one. She's way up there right now. The YouTube channel grew a lot and I started a Patreon which is going very well. I really appreciate these Patreon supporters. They're helping me to be able to produce these videos each week and make them better and better. They'll be helping me do all kinds of stuff for this channel in 2022. And we're giving them some extra exclusive content. I'm doing extra content. Kent has his own Patreon series. They're getting things like stickers and t-shirts and stuff like that. All right, on to more 2021 snakes. The hatch date for this clutch is September 14th. So as of right now, they are like three and a half months old. Um, Freya and Ron gave us six babies, four of which were available, three have sold, but only one of them has shipped out. So we can actually compare all five from the same clutch. These two will be shipping in the next week or so. I needed to wait until this one started eating on her own and uh, had five or six meals that, that she she ate on her own. This is the one that I was assist feeding for quite a while. She took, I think, I think I assist fed her seven meals before she started eating on her own, but she's now had three meals on her own and she strikes without hesitation. So uh, she's doing great. You'll notice she is much smaller than the others though. And that's the difference between hopper mice and rat pups. So let's put her right there. That little one isn't shy at all, but she hasn't been worked with much because the priority was that she develop a feed response. So me pulling her out and handling her all the time would uh, not be conducive to that. So she's still really well adjusted though. And she is an asphalt extreme gene. She might be orange dream. Uh, the jury's still out on that. And then her sister here is just an asphalt 
if you're gonna have one gene, asphalt is the gene to have. Both of these girls will be producing some really cool freeways in a couple years. Here's number three, Tracy. He's in shed right now. Uh, he's an awesome little boy. He is technically still available, but he may stick around, as I mentioned in the last video. He's a spot nose, uh, inchy, extreme gene. And uh, he's never missed a meal except maybe his first one. So he's, he's a good size. He loves to come out and explore. And uh, he's actually been really into exploration lately. If you look at, it's gonna be tough to compare with these little hiding things that I, that I gave, but we'll, I'll, I'll pull those at the end of this and we'll compare the sizes. But that's a snake who pretty much hasn't missed a meal. I've recently shown my two holdbacks, but it'll be cool to have them in with the rest of the clutch. So Dolly here, I believe is spot nose asphalt calico extreme gene. And she was a late starter. She had to be assist fed a few times. She eats on her own now, but hasn't switched to rats yet. So she is the second smallest of the group. And let's just, since Tracy's right here, let's just look at this size comparison between, let's see if I can get him at about the same spot on his body. I don't know if you can tell. Oh yeah, you can tell. He's quite a bit bigger. And then comparison to Dolly, probably was assist fed four or five times before she struck on her own, but she still is just eating little mice, you know, so she's not on, everybody else is on rat pups. So these two, the, these two are, are still just on mice. You know, they're, they're pretty small compared to the others. So Tiger Lily has all of the genes that Dolly has, probably, as well as Inchy and Orange Dream. So all six available genes, I believe that Tiger Lily here got. And she is the biggest. She struck and ate the first frozen thawed meal that I ever offered to her. I mean, her first meal was a frozen thawed, so she's never eaten alive. And um, she just uh, last week took her first weaned rat. So she's, she's the first one out of the clutch to get bumped up to weaned rats. So she's a big girl. Oh, and I'm losing them. I'm losing them. Don't take off. There you go. There you go. A little head shy. Look at this comparison right here. Look at, look at Tiger Lily versus little number four here. That's a big difference, right? And then versus Dolly. And it looks like number five might be even bigger than Tracy over here, number three. I mean, it's hard to tell. They're moving all over the place and and being crazy snakes. You can at least tell the size difference from all those, you know, to her. So Dolly here was the first one to pip and crawl out of her egg. I knew that I was keeping her regardless of the genetics because she's the first snake that I've ever hatched, technically. And, hey. Quit trying to leave. You can't, you can't leave. Let's put a hide back on you. There you go. Tracy, you can't leave. That's against the rules. There you go. Man, snake wrangling. Tiger Lily was the last one to crawl out of her egg and I caught that on video. So I knew that I had to keep her too. Um, regardless of her genetics. I just got lucky that the snakes that I planned to keep for sentimental reasons were also the snakes that had the genes that, you know, the gene combo that I would have wanted. Hold on, let me count snakes really quick. Oh good, three, <laughs> three are in the hide. I looked in, <laughs> I looked in and only saw two snakes. Really happy about how 2021 turned out for green room pythons, and I'm excited to see what surprises are in store for 2022. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. I was thinking of opening a Morph Market account and selling Eric the Murderer since he's a pop culture icon now. So like $6,000 or, or best offer.